In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys the perfect mid-game guide. All of the tips in this video are perfectly crafted in order to help you progress faster in the game and obtain OP items. Be sure to pay attention and take some notes because without any further ado, here is the best mid-game guide. Alright, so starting off, just to quickly clarify what actually counts as a mid-game, and it's agreed that if you're around the 35B area, then you're pretty much in mid-game. So starting off with number one, that's actually diamond eggs. Now for starters, please do not use any of your diamond eggs on your hive i know it seems tempting to get that free legendary bee but whatever you do please do not use your diamond eggs because you are going to regret it so much in the future because i don't care if you're a blue hive or not later in the future you're probably going to be buying the diamond mask it's not too hard to get just a little bit of resources and then five diamond eggs and everyone that's grinded for the diamond mask knows that that is the hardest part because everyone has made the mistake of using their diamond eggs so don't be like them don't use your diamond eggs please save them and even after after you get the diamond mask, don't use your diamond eggs because you should actually be donating them to the wind shrine instead to get wins. And as an added bonus, if you didn't already know this, you can actually claim a free diamond egg in the 30B zone right under on its lit art. There's just a floating token right there. Now, next of all, if you're a mid game player, you are most likely craving the sweet goodness of hatching a mythic bee, most likely from a mythic eggs. If you're mid game, don't try to get it from commando chick. Don't try to get it from brown bear. Even if you're not trying to grind mythic bees, you should be doing all of black bear's quests because they revolve solely around collecting pollen which is the simplest thing to do in this game you can literally just macro black bears quests or just go afk it's very easy and probably the best way to get a mythic egg now here's another thing that you're most likely going to regret not doing in the future it's literally just collecting your daily glue log in once a day even if it just takes two minutes hop into the gummy layer and grab your glue dispenser because it can give you up to five glues and when you're saving up for the gummy mask and the gummy boots which cost 250 and 500 glue you're gonna need as much as you can get don't even think about getting the gummy baller now a really important topic that i see a lot of people making huge mistakes on is your gifted basic bee now don't get me wrong if you didn't know gifted basic bee is literally the best gifted bee in the entire game because when it's gifted it grants you 1.2 straight up pollen now of course you want to get this bee but the mistake people make is how they obtain it because so many people will waste a star tree on their basic bee in order to get one yeah that's right waste one now sure it's a great way to get your gifted basic bee it's kind of how i did it actually but the real way you actually want to get it is by using straight up basic eggs I actually made an entire video on this a year ago because basic eggs are a lot better than wasting an entire star tree and even if you're a cheapskate and don't even want to use basic eggs you can also give to basic bee using sunflower seeds it's just kind of really really unpredictable either way though don't use your star tree on your basic bee use either sunflower seeds or a heck ton of basic eggs trust me it's worth now, Gifted Basic Bee is great and all, but there's something that's even more important, and that's memory matches. Because if you didn't know, using these memory matches as often as possible is probably one of the best things you can do long-term to your inventory. Because if you didn't know, using the memory matches can give you some pretty good resources, considering you can do them almost twice a day. And getting something as simple as a few red extracts and maybe a glue or oil, doing that every single day, twice a day, stacks up a ton. And it makes it so that way when you make it to endgame, you can afford forward the end game items so much easier as you've already stacked up a ton of your resources. Now I've seen so many bee swarm players make this next mistake and it's literally just feeding your treats to your bees. Now if you're wondering how you're going to level up your bees without treats, there's a certain type of treats that you should be using. You want to use just the regular basic treats on your bees to level them up. What you don't want to use is your sunflower seeds, strawberries, pineapples, or blueberries as you're going to need them later for crafting. And oh my gosh, you are going to be doing a lot of crafting. Trust me on that. And if if you use all of your resources on your bees then you're not going to be able to craft anything in the blender and it's going to make getting the new gear probably one of the most painful things ever now this next tip i really wish i knew as a mid game player because it made my life absolute torture when i made it to end game and that's the mechanic called favor now basically favor has to do with the wind shrine and the higher your favor the higher chance that you get good loot from the wind shrine specifically the windy bee and simple the higher your favor gets the higher chance you have have to get Windy Bee when you're actually grinding for Windy Bee. And the mistake most players make is not building it up when they're mid game. So that way, once they actually want the Windy Bee, they have to entirely build up their favor from the ground up. And it makes getting Windy Bee a, such a painful process. So if you really want to save yourself all of the pain and torture later, you want to donate as many items as possible to the Wind Shrine. But before you just stop there and donate your entire inventory, there's actually a certain item you want to donate because while donating your inventory would be pretty nice, 
it'd be a huge waste and the best thing you can actually donate as it's way more efficient than donating literally anything else in your inventory. After that, since you're at mid game transitioning into end game in a bit, you want to get used to doing your daily king beetles and your daily tunnel bears. This is just because they give decent loot and while it may not seem the best at times, the loot stacks up if you do it every single day. Like seriously, just a guaranteed 5 tickets a day and a couple of extracts is going to save you later on. Now, next up is something really important that I see a lot of players argue over, so I'm gonna finally show you guys how to actually do it correctly. I'm talking about spirit petals. Now, most people just don't know which order to use them in because you can use a spirit petal on either the petal wand, the petal bell, or windy bee. Well, for starters, you have to use your first spirit petal on the petal wand. Seriously, just do it. Don't donate it to the wind shrine. Please just use your first spirit petal on the petal wand. Now, next up is where it gets a little tougher because you can either use it on the petal bell or the windy bee. Now, I've seen a lot of different opinions on this and to be perfectly honest you could do both but if you want to know what I did personally I got the pedal belt first and then used my third spirit pedal to get windy bee so the order that I myself would recommend is pedal wand pedal belt then windy bee and speaking of the pedal wand if you didn't know it actually takes 10 star jellies to craft and the pedal belt takes 25 now as a mid game player this can seem like a lot of royal jellies and please don't make this mistake but a lot of people craft their star jellies please don't craft them it's kind of a waste the best thing you can probably do is just do your coconut crab as often as possible. I did post a video right here in the top right that you can use to defeat coconut crab nice and easy. But to be honest, the best way to get star jellies fast is just to save them up. So once you manage to get yourself a golden star amulet, just stop using your star jelly and save them for the pedal gear. Now next up is one you wouldn't think, but it's actually Mother Bear. Now Mother Bear's quests are really good. They actually give you an amazing star treat, which you're definitely going to need for getting those star amulets up there. But you don't want to grind out Mother Bear's quests. Don't be wasting all of your honey on treats just to level up your bees. My best recommendation for Mother Bear is just to leave it going on in the background. As you progress in the game, as you level up your bees, you'll slowly just naturally complete Mother Bear's quests. And to be honest, that's the best way to do it. And one more huge mistake that you can make in this game is to grind out crazy amulets. If you're a mid-game hive, don't worry about grinding for the perfect stick bug amulet, the perfect moon amulet. You don't even have to crazy worry about star amulets. Honestly, just a star amulet itself is pretty good if you're a mid game hive and definitely don't worry about supreme star amulet or choosing a hive color yet that's for late game and i see a lot of players making the mistake of becoming a certain hive color too early in the game so just save all of that for later as well as stressing out over all the costs for the end game gear trust me it looks daunting right now but you'll be able to get it in the future i would know because i made the torturous mistake of playing through this entire game but i really hope you guys enjoyed this mid game guide and let me know down in the comments if you'd prefer an end game guide video next or an early game guide. And with that said, be sure to subscribe if you want. I do put a lot of effort into these videos, and I will see you guys later.